Hey guys, welcome back to The Blissful Athlete. Thank you for tuning in. If you're watching today's video, then you will be learning about bandhas. A lot of people are asking me the exact techniques and how to perform each bandha, and so that's what we're gonna get into today. But before we do that, if you're new to the channel and you want to learn more about authentic yoga, how you can incorporate it into your practice, then click the subscribe button down below. That's exactly what this channel is about. A bandha is an internal lock in a sense. Imagine the body as we know it's pure energy, but imagine this energy is seeping out of us in various different places. Bandhas are a way of retaining that energy, that prana, the life force energy within us and allowing the life force energy to recirculate within the body and then also within specific regions. There are three main bandhas. They are the Mula Bandha, the Udhyana Bandha and the Jalandra Bandha, which is the throat, the stomach, and the base of the perineum. And when all of those three are combined, then that performs Mahamudra Bandha. Now, each one of these locks is pressing up against an intra organ. So all the Bandha really is, is pressing the inter organ, such as, let's say, the stomach, pressing the inter organ into the intra organ. Another Bandha that is a great example of this is the Trinetra Bandha. And it's when the eyes, when you're sucking the eyes and looking up towards the third eye, that process of sucking the inter organ or the eyes towards the third eye is what is a bandha. Another example of an internal organ pushing into an intra organ is the throat. In Jalandra Bandha, you tuck your chin down and you suck your throat in. You're sucking that into the Vishuddhi Chakra. Now, when that happens, you're locking, you're keeping energy in that specific region. So again, the body is keeping its energy in a specific region based off of a bandha, pushing into the inter organ, into the intra organ. Now, if you're still with me, what this is going to lead you is to an anti-sex experience. Now, what we mean by that is it's not, not a sexual experience, but it's not a sexual experience as well. It's not not having sex and it's not sex as, as well. What you experience is that euphoric bliss, that, that, that sexual life energy that does exist. What you'll feel is that space of oneness with the divine. And that is what an anti-sex experience is like. It's, it's very euphoric and, and it, it's, it's a high frequency. It's a tough, it's a tough experience to put words into, but when you practice real authentic yoga, this is what it's all about. It's the science of the anti-sex with Paramashiva, with the, the all-pervading consciousness. And so once you are performing bandhas and the pranayamas and all of these different components, the 12 components that my Swamiji is teaching, bandhas is one of these components that leads to that anti-sex experience. So how do we perform each one of these bandhas? Well, we're gonna look to the scriptures as always. And so let's find out how to actually perform these bandhas. And like we do with everything, we go back to the scriptures. We go to scriptural reference to understand what is Paramashiva teaching us here and why and how to do it. And so let's look first and foremost at the Mula Bandha, which is at the base of the perineum. What Paramashiva is saying in the Dhyana Bindu Upanishad is that by performing Mula Bandha, even an old man becomes young. By pressing the genitals with the heels, the yogin should contract the anus by drawing the apana upwards. This is known as Mula Bandha. Now, what Paramashiva is saying there is the apana coming upwards. And so prana has different forms of its energy. And one of them is apana, which is when it's flowing out of the system. So what we're doing with Mula Bandha is we're keeping it's like we're blocking that energy from going out of us and we're going to make a U-turn and keep it flowing within us. And how he's describing to do it is by first placing the heel at the genital region. Basically, this is like the scrotum area, right between the anus and the, the genitals. If you place your heel there, that is the exact spot that he's speaking of. And then slightly tighten that region and you can feel like you're locking that base in a sense. Another way you can imagine it is like just sucking the, the two butt cheeks together. That is Mula Bandha. Now, in some scenarios, when you're performing the Pratama Vinyasa Krama, the 108 asanas of Nityananda Yoga, 
We are performing Mula Bandha, but the heel is not there. So it doesn't always need to be there, but is it, a great, it is a great way to block that energy from flowing out and to also keep your awareness on that spot that you should be sucking and pulling up. So in this moment, if you haven't yet engaged it, just bring your awareness slightly to that region in between the anus and, and the genitals and engage that. And then just imagine like you're holding that, keep holding that for a little bit. That is Mula Bandha, okay? And if you don't quite get it yet, just practice it a little bit and it'll come. The next uh, Bandha that we're going to move to is Jalandra Bandha. This is the throat lock like I had mentioned. And why we're gonna go from the base to the throat and skip the middle is because the order in which you engage all of the Bandhas is important. So if you are engaging three Bandhas all together, which is the Mahamudra Bandha, or if you're engaging Mula Bandha and Jalandra Bandha, then you need to engage them properly in the right way. And we'll go to the scriptures for this as well. So in the Yoga Sikopanishad, it says that the Bandha known as Jalandra Bandha should be performed at the close of the Puraka, which is inhalation. And this is out of the form of constricting the throat with a view to obstruct the passage of vital air. After constricting the throat, he should establish the vital air firmly in the bosom. This is known as the Jalandra Bandha, which causes the full flow of nectar. Should the constriction of the throat be made with the immediate contraction of neither part by performing Pachimatana in the middle, the prana vital air will reach the Brahmanandi. So with that last half, we'll get into that maybe in another video. But what he's describing is that one, you're tucking the throat, yes, but first you're inhalate, you're inhaling. So you're inhaling the vital air and then you're tucking the throat down. And what you're going to do is you're going to tuck first and foremost, the tendency is to, we just tuck our chin. Bring, keep in mind that you want to keep your spine in a line. So I'll churn here. What you're going to try and do is you're going to first align the head nice and straight. And then you'll see that naturally the chin comes a little bit closer. Okay, so you're going from here to here, and then from there you're going to tuck the chin down towards the throat center. So you're tucking as much as you can with trying to keep the head, neck, and spine in a straight line. And what that's going to do is lock the throat center. So you can bend the head, but really emphasize keeping the head straight, chin down, and then tuck, and bringing the chin towards the chest. So this is how it will look finally. You're going to inhale, head back, chin down and tuck. Okay, so that's how you perform Jalandra Bandha. Now the third Bandha is the Udhyana Bandha, which is sucking the stomach in, but also upwards. Now, again, if we were to perform all of these three in succession, we would start with the base, locking the perineal floor with the Mula Bandha, then we would tuck the chin down in Jalandra Bandha, and then we would move on to Udhyana Bandha, okay? And again, Udhyana Bandha, you're sucking the stomach in, but then you're also pulling it as much as you can upwards, okay? Now, before we get into actually performing that and how to do that, the, we'll read the Shastra Pramana for that as well. What well, Parama Shiva is saying in the Yoga Sikha Upanishad in verse 106 to 109 is that the Udhyana Bandha should be performed at the close of the Kumbhaka, which is holding the breath, and before the Richaka, which is the exhalation, for the reason that by such Bandha, the prana or the vital air would spring up in the Shushumna. This is said to be what is called the Udhyana by, y by yogins. Uh, now, just so you know as well, the Sushumna is the main nadi. It's the main channel where the energy or the prana can flow upwards, okay? Now, Udhyana, <clears throat> Paramashiva continues to say that Udhyana is always communicated by the guru in the natural course. The practitioner should practice it without sloth, whereupon even an old man would turn young. He should with effort make constriction above and below the navel should he practice it for six months, he will verily conquer death. There's no doubt about it. So that's a pretty powerful statement that Parama Shiva is saying. He says a lot of these types of uh, 
comments in, in various different pramanas where if you, you know, do this pranayama, if you do this bandha, if you do this technique, you will conquer death. And I can say from my experience that when you keep the energy within you, when it flows within you, you can literally sit without breathing for a long period of time because that prana is flowing seamlessly through you and it even flows into you without inhalation. So the practice of bandhas is really important, uh, especially doing them with full authenticity and integrity. Paramashiva goes on to say that this is not something that's easy to do. And so it takes dedication, it takes uh, commitment, it takes an integrity to the technique itself. Um, and so that's what we'll get into right now, how to actually perform Udhyana Bandha. So the first thing that you wanna do is you always wanna make sure that your spine is straight. Uh, there's a pramana that says you could be lying down, you could be standing up, but first and foremost, let's start with a straight spine. Then what you wanna do is you wanna suck the stomach in and then as, as much as you can, so pull your in, internal organs towards the back of the body as much as you can, and then once you feel you can't pull it backwards anymore, you're gonna lift and pull the stomach or the inter organs, intra organs within you and pulling them upwards. So you may not see a difference at the beginning, but first you wanna suck the stomach in, take a pause and then pulling the stomach up. Now a side view will look something like this. And so that's how you perform the first three bandhas. Now, the, th the fourth bandha is actually the combination of all of these three bandhas together, and that is Mahamudra bandha. Now, Mahamudra bandha is easily the most powerful of all the bandhas, and it's very intense. It's not easy to hold for an extended period of time. But when you're in the asana, if you're performing Mahamudra bandha, do your best to be just be fully integrated to engaging all three. And what you'll feel is that one, the practice, it'll allow you to hold it for longer periods of time, but like you'll just understand and you'll experience the power of engaging all the bandhas at one time. Now, before I go on, I should mention that we have multiple pramanas on all of these bandhas. Some might emphasize the technique, it might emphasize on the benefits. And so I'm just sticking with three of the Shastra Pramanas so that are revealed in the Vedagamas directly by Panamashiva. That's what we're focusing on today. And so in the Mahamudra Bandha, in the Dhyanopanishad, the Akashic Revelation, so the English translation, is the cleansing with the Pranayama of the heaps of impurities in the Nadis, the bringing about of the union between the moon and the sun, the complete drying up of the bodily fluids, rashas, vata, pitta, and kapha, is known as the Mahamudra. With the chin laid on the chest, pressing the abyss of the genitals with the left foot, holding with the two hands the outstretched right leg, filling with the breath the pair of bellies, and holding it up, one should slowly exhale. This indeed is said to be the sin-destroying Mahamudra for men. Now, of course, this isn't just for men, and Paramashiva is going into a lot of detail here. What he's doing is he's showing us actually an asana as well, Mahamudra asana, is when the heel is bent and pulled in towards, pressed up against that genital region like we do with uh, Mula Bandha, and the opposite leg is straight out and you're reaching and holding the toes. From that position, you lock the mula bandha, you tuck the chin down, and then you suck the stomach in and up, and you're engaged in Mahamudra bandha. Now, you can perform Mahamudra bandha in a seated position, cross-legged comfortably, or you can actually do it while standing as well. You do not need to be in that one asana, that one position. But this is the first reference that Paramashiva gives for what Mahamudra is, what this Bandha is. And that is with the legs straight out, reaching out and holding on to the toes. Now the power of Mahamudra Bandha, as I said, it really keeps the energy flowing within you. It's very intense and it's difficult to hold for a long time because ultimately you are holding your breath. You're not inhalation. There's no inhalation. And so what I wanna say before leaving this video is that Kumbhaka is a very important component of this, the retention, the holding of the breath. 
and do your best to hold it as long as you can. So if you're doing a sequence, for instance, in the PVK, the 108 asanas, we engage three bandhas, we engage a bandha in every asana, and if you're not able to hold it for a long time and you have to breathe, there's nothing wrong with that. Just do your best, be fully integrated to the bandha. If you're, instance, if you're holding Uddiyana bandha, do your best to hold that as long as you can. When you need to breathe, you can do so. And when you feel that you can keep holding, then do so as well. So just be fully integrated to where you're at and the state of your yoga practice. Bandhas are a main component of yoga. So I highly recommend that you start to incorporate in, uh, the bandhas within your practice as well. Now, if you're new to the channel and you're new to Nityananda Yoga and you want to learn more about all of the components that should be involved in your yoga practice, I'll put a link down below where you can learn all about the 12 components that my guru, Bhagavan Sri Nityananda Paramashivam, has revealed to the world. And so it's a free online course where you can go to Nityananda University and learn about what these 12 components are. And again, I'll put that link in the description box below. Now, if you're new to the channel and you feel like you got something as well, please click subscribe and give me a thumbs up as well. Let me know in the comment section what you thought of the video as well. I uh, love getting feedback and I love creating content based off of that feedback. And that's exactly what I've done with this video. Somebody asked me about the bandhas and so that's why I did this video. And of course, and I'll make this video as a part of its own playlist where you can learn all about the 12 components. And so I'll continue to do videos of those afterwards. So thank you for tuning in everybody. I hope you got something from this video. Looking forward to sharing some more content with you in the future. Take care and as always, be blissful. Nitinam.